Here are the problems that I'm going to be doing today concerning primitive elements and the order of various numbers. And in number five, I'm going to make a comment about the relationships between the order and the primitive elements. You'll need that if you want to do more advanced questions in this area. Now this all happens in the world of modular arithmetic. So if you're not comfortable about modular arithmetic, have a look at my video, Modular Arithmetic Made Easy, and then proceed with this video. Okay, so I try and make these videos simple, and I tried to do this without getting into Z star in, but I really got all too complicated. So let's just um, explain a couple of things before we start the problems. So Zn is a set, and it's the set made up of just the numbers 1, 3 to n minus 1. So for example, Z7 is just the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, Z star in is also a set. It's made up of all the elements. We, well, we start with all the elements of Z in, but then we only retain the ones that have a GCD with N equal to 1. So let's see how this works. In the case of Z star 7, well, we start with the numbers 1 through 6. Now, all of these numbers have a GCD with 7 equal to 1. That's what happens because 7 is a prime. So Z star 7 is just the same set, the set 1, 3 to 6. Now in the case of 15, things get a little bit more complicated. Z 15 is just the set 1, 3 to 14. But Z star 15 means that we take that set that I just mentioned and we just retain the ones that have a GCD with 15 equal to 1. So 1 and 2 are fine, but 3 we can't retain because the GCD of 3 and 15 is 3. And for example, 10 we can't retain because the GCD of 10 and 15 is 5. It's not equal to 1. So you can see up on the screen Z star 15. Okay, so now we're ready to go to our first question. Find all primitive elements modulo 7. So what I've done in the first column there going down is... Uh, write down the elements of Z star 7. And then I've raised all these numbers to different powers or increasing powers. So let's go through the case of 2. You can see there 2 to the power 1 is 2. 2 squared, or 2 times 2, is equal to 4, modulo 7. Then 4 times 2, which gives us 2 cubed, is equal to 8, but remember we're dealing modulo 7, so that I replace the 8 with a 1. Now once I get to a 1, the whole pattern repeats because the next power is just 1 times 2, is 2, so 2 to the power 4 is 2, modulo 7. Now the numbers 3 and 5 are special. You might stop the video and see if you can work out why. It's because 3 and 5, doing this process of increasing powers, generate all the numbers that are in the primitive uh, in Z star 7. You can see here with 3. The powers are 3, 2, 6, 4, 5 and 1. Well, that's all the elements of Z star 7. So in that case, we say it's a primitive element. So the answer is that um, 3 and 5 are the pr primitive elements modulo 7. So now let's go on to the... Uh, next question, find the order of 4 in Z7. So if we cast our eyes down to the row involving 4, you can see that we get the orders go 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1. And not the orders, the powers go 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1. So the order of 4 is the smallest power that gives us a 1. So in this case, you can see that the smallest power is 3. 4 cubed is equivalent to 1 modulo 7. So the answer is the order of 4 is 3. Before I go on, if you look down and work out the orders here of all the various numbers, you can see that you'll get an order of 1 or 2 or 3 or 6. And the observation is that all orders divide 6, which is equal to 7 minus 1 but more particularly it equals 5, 7. So if you want to understand the fifth question, that relationship between the primitive order and the uh, primitive elements in the order, then you need to understand the Euler-Totient function, which is given this symbol phi. So have a look at my video, Euler-Totient function made easy if you're interested. 
in understanding um, question five when we get to it. Before I go on to the next question, I'd encourage you to have a look at some of my other mathematical videos on YouTube. There's, there's over 60 of them. And in response to some viewers' questions, the most viewed videos are the Chinese Remainder Theorem and the number E is Everywhere, which have over a quarter of a million views. Uh, my favourite videos are Intro to the Proof Fermat's Last Theorem and How JPEG Works. And the hardest video to make was probably Intro to the Four Colour Map Theorem. So now let's go on to the third question. Find all primitive elements in Z15. So on the left column, I've written all the elements of Z star 15. And then I've generated all the powers. Now in this case you can see that there's no there's no element here that generates through its through its powers all the elements of Z15. So there is no primitive here, which is fine, you don't have to have a primitive. So the answer is there is no primitive element. Okay, now let's go on to the fourth question. What's the order of 2 in Z15? So we could just follow the same sort of idea as when we were doing the earlier question involving order. So we go down to the, the column, uh, the row involving 2, and we can see there that the smallest power of 2 that gives us a 1 is 4. 2 to the 4 actually equals 16, but 16 in Z15 is 1. So 2 to the 4 is 1, and 4 is that's the smallest power. So the answer is the order of 2 is 4. And this time we can notice that all orders divide the number 8 and 8 equals 5 of 15. So now let's go on to that fifth thing, which is really a bit optional, but will help you if you do harder questions. What's the relationship or relationships between the order and the primitive elements? So here are the two rules, which you could have sort of sensed from what we've done so far. The order of A in Zn divides 5n. We saw that in the cases that we went through. The second rule, which is a little bit more subtle, is that A is a primitive in Zn if, and only if, the order of A in Zn equals phi of n. So that's it for primitive elements and order made easy. I hope you found it useful.